Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We are in chapter 3 and continuing with the next topic that is 3.2 Static Analysis. So in the previous topic 3.1 we discussed what's the difference between static analysis and dynamic analysis. Now we will get into the details of that that what exactly static and dynamic analysis is all about. So in this particular tutorial, we are talking more about one of the important prospects of static analysis. To get started, the very first technique in static analysis is control flow analysis. Where control flow analysis is all about how exactly these steps will be taken. So if you remember your use case diagram or you talk about control flow diagrams or even if you talk about a particular, you know, the uh, I'm not getting exactly the another example which was just there in mind, but yes, uh, there are a lot of such ways by which you can find out, yeah, state transition testing or state transition diagram, which basically tells you that how a person or user can navigate on your application moving from one particular feature or module to another module. Now, that's what you call it as a control flow the control to decide that how user can move from one module to another module will be analyzed using the control flow diagrams, which can be obviously helpful from use cases and straight transitions moving from one particular state to another state as well. So there are a number of anomalies which can be found in a system using this technique because obviously the movements are being noticed and monitored and uh, the same can be very helpful in order to determine that what could be the possible outcome in order to decide if the user can move out of this or move into this, how, if the decision is met, if there is a decision, the further decision will be tested with other separate techniques and beyond that obviously you will add more value by conducting control flow analysis. Moreover, these techniques generally help you to find defects much earlier in the life cycle as it is one of the static analysis approach and it's more effective in order to understand with respect to static testing because static testing is quite limited to the work products which you prepare as theoretical documentations, whereas static analysis is more of what with help of uh, the code and designs which you create. So code and design basically gives you a real-time interface and adds more value in your preparation and definitely helps you to find complex issues much easier. And generally, the control flow analysis is done with help of tools because manually it would be quite complicated to understand that. Additionally, control flow analysis can be used to determine cyclometric complexity, which is another technique to find out the different ways, different possibilities, the loops, the repetition of a control flow can be understood, including the for loop, do while, while when. All these conditions can be checked with help of the control flow and cyclometric complexity. So obviously we have not discussed about cyclometric complexities just because the constraint that it is not discussed in the syllabus, it's not a part of the syllabus. So I don't want to give you with anything which is not required in order to prepare for the certification. Further, the cyclometric complexity value is a positive integer which represents a number of independent paths in a strongly connected graph. So of course, any kind of possible things will be covered as a part of cyclometric complexity so you will be able to understand more of the real-time execution of a product or an app code but practically not executing them so that's what is more important the cyclometric complexity values is generally used to understand the overall complexity of the code as the name suggests the complexity of the code can be understood or derived with a number of test cases by using cyclomatic complexity. The word says that cyclomatic, that means cyclic complexity. If you think that a user can keep on rotating onto a particular piece of code for several iteration, that is what we will be measuring as a part of this. And the control flow analysis will be covering that. So that's something really important to understand. The next thing here is data flow analysis, which is strictly about the data movement. Like earlier, it was the user movement. Now it is moving of the data from one module to another. So data flow analysis covers a variety of techniques which gather information about the use of variables in a system. Now a variable in a particular code must be declared once in the beginning, but it might be called at any point of time. We generally call it as inheritance 
or polymorphism, those kind of concepts. And you can relate it to those kind of things to address that how a variable can be actually called later in the program as well in order to use the same value or same data. That's where the data flow analysis will be quite helpful to understand how a variable is being used and further connected. The life cycle of each variable is investigated. That is right from the declaration, definition, reading, evaluated and destroyed. That's the life cycle of the variable. We have to make sure that it is releasing the memory which is it allocating during the time of execution. But once it is no longer required, it must release the memory which enhances the performance of the product in turn, not only finding an anomaly during the code practices, but also helping with a lot of non-functional characteristics to improvise and enhance. One common technique is called as definition use notation, which is quite common in practices when you talk about the coding standards, where the life cycle of each variable is split into three different atomic across. Now, what are the atomics? D, U, K. Now, D stands for when the variable is declared, defined or initialized. U stands for use. That means when the variable is used or read in either a computational or decision predicate. K stands for killed, that means destroyed, when the variable is killed or destroyed or goes out of scope. So that's the basic life cycle of a variable which must be followed when you write any kind of program or code. Further to add to this, uh, possible data flow anomalies include performing the correct actions on a variable at the wrong time or carrying out an incorrect action in a data in a variable. Now, there are certain anomalies which you should understand about such things if not done accordingly or not followed with the life cycle of a variable can result into these kind of issues and effects. For example, failing to assign a value to a variable before using it. You have not assigned but you are trying to use it. Of course, it will interrupt your execution. Taking an incorrect path due to incorrect value in a control predicate. Trying to use a variable after it is destroyed. Referencing a variable when it is out of scope. So, you know, things which are called off and still you're trying to refer that after a program and piece of code. So you must take care of that and do not do such mistakes in order to avoid large number of defects. Declaring and destroying a variable without using it. So that means this was not at all required. So why did you declare it at all? Redefining a variable before it has been used and failing to kill a dynamically allocated variable causing a lot of memory leak. That's the main concern which we were just talking about. More or less modifying a variable which results in unexpected side effects. So sometime it might be critical that you create something which has a lot of side effect and conflict with other parameters and values of the program. Additionally, uh, we do have some more concerns which should be taken care of at the time of data flow analysis which is uh, the development language being used may guide the rules used in data flow analysis. Of course, it is driven by that. Programming languages may allow the programmer to perform certain actions with variables which are not illegal, but may cause the system to behave differently than the programmer expected under certain circumstances. So it's more important for a programmer to understand why he is he doing that, or does the programming standard allow him to do that? like some of the protocols which will be taken with respect to certain languages like Java, Python, Ruby, Perl, Shell. So we must, you know, have to have understanding of those protocols and then implement them same when you make use of such languages. Data flow testing, it uses the control flow graph to explore the unreasonable things that can happen to data and uh, therefore finds different defects than control flow analysis. So it has better thing because it directly gets into the core of a particular data transfer between the programs or within the programs. At this point of time, a technical test analyst should include this technique when planning testing since many of these defects cause intermittent failures that are difficult to find while performing dynamic testing. So yes, a lot of dynamic issues are due to these code analysis. So a test analyst must make sure that a proper static analysis is being done before it can move to dynamic testing. Data flow analysis is static technique. Of course, we know that it may miss some of the issues that occur as data is used in runtime system. For example, the static data variable may contain a pointer into a dynamically created array that does not even exist until runtime. So multiprocessor usage and preemptive 
multitasking may create race conditions which will not be found by data flow or control flow analysis. This entire thing basically talks about uh, declaring something in order to make use of it when it is actually required. Probably you declare a variable right in the beginning of a program and then you may not use it for a quite a long while and you want to use it much later in your life cycle or in your program. That means that it is allocating a memory for a longer duration time. Probably the user may never reach there or might take a long time to reach there and thus it is degrading the response and performance of the application. So you must take care of such things and then address it accordingly. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. We had a discussion about control flow analysis and data flow analysis. We'll be getting back to you with more detail on static analysis further. So stay connected and continue for that. Should you have anything else beyond this, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.